Ah, hi! You are here already. Yeah, I'm here working again on uh, IC7000 from ICOM and I thought it is uh, a simple fix but uh, it turned out to uh, be an interesting fault. So we have uh, something like uh, a thermic problem. So um, the receive is uh, good when you switch the radio on and uh, after a short while you know the signal is dropping and uh, that looks like a thermic uh, issue. And uh, well, additional to that, um, yeah, have have a look. So you uh, already know this disaster. So again, we uh, have damaged ribbon cable. So really unbelievable, and it is again. You know uh, the same ribbon cable we uh, had before so I don't know so that is really odd why these ribbon cables are uh, always uh, damaged um, I have really no uh, explanation for it okay um, so yeah <laughs> as, as always I have to replace uh, the faulty ribbon cable first and uh, yeah, then we uh, can start and um, do the fault finding. So, let's see what we can do. Yeah, just a close view, so simply have a look, so that is really, really uh, incredible. Well, uh, anyways, uh, I was uh, already uh, working uh, here on the main board, but uh, before uh, we do not uh, have this here uh, under control, we uh, can't go ahead. All right. So, yeah. Anyways, that uh, really means uh, I uh, have to take uh, the complete radio apart, as uh, we have seen it with uh, the uh, uh, other IC7000 the other day. So uh, we really need uh, to take off the complete uh, power amplifier board uh, to get uh, access uh, to this uh, ribbon cable, then we replace it. And um, yeah, when uh, ribbon cable are replaced, then we uh, can start uh, troubleshooting. Yeah, just opened uh, the uh, chassis from here down below. So this is uh, the PA board, uh, as we already know. And uh, I wonder uh, why we have uh, that uh, flux here <clears throat> everywhere. So, yeah, you know, it looks like uh, that uh, somebody was uh, already in, so maybe somebody tried to um, rework uh, the station, um, uh, re rework uh, the uh, PCB, but um, yeah, I really don't know, so that is uh, really odd. Well, um, anyways, uh, I have uh, to take it apart and uh, maybe <clears throat> I can then find um, if there is uh, something different uh, from what it should be. Um, well, but uh, in, in any case, uh, we, we need uh, to get uh, access to the ribbon cable, otherwise um, it is uh, hopeless to uh, do anything uh, else on this radio. Yeah, you know this uh, game already, so um, I'm trying now to lift the board up and yeah, we are here, it is still not completely loose, so I have to take this copper away, 
that uh, we can get all the corks free which we have now and now I simply uh, can pull it out and now yeah I have access to the ribbon cable okay well this is what uh, the chassis look like um, yeah <laughs> everything is ripped off so yeah that is is uh, how it look like maybe it is uh, yeah of any interest for uh, somebody um, to know how uh, it looks like and here again our ribbon cable which I can now pull uh, off and uh, yeah I have uh, already the new uh, ribbon cable here so um, I'm gonna replace it right now and uh, then we can go ahead oh so there is not really much grease here on the finals so that is definitely what uh, I need to improve a little bit yeah it is really um, almost uh, dry so uh, let's put some grease uh, back I mean you really don't need too much but uh, it is definitely not good when uh, it is really dry so that is definitely um, not good so then the heat uh, can't really get transferred so okay so um, I've uh, re-greased uh, both sides so the finals are re-greased and now here the heatsink uh, itself and uh, yeah as you uh, can see um, the new ribbon uh, cables are uh, already in and uh, this uh, bump protection is uh, also uh, on so it is uh, something like uh, this here just uh, to uh, protect it you know and uh, yeah therefore you can uh, take uh, something like that just uh, to protect uh, the cables okay now um, I have to put it uh, back in um, I have uh, just uh, checked the um, pre-amplifier and uh, yeah it looks good so no marks uh, yeah maybe it is a good idea to uh, lift it up and uh, regrease it a little bit yeah that is something uh, I should uh, do so you can guess guess was it a good idea to have a look or not you can you can uh, bet right now and ta-da so that is really unbelievable unbelievable believable isn't it so there is nothing so really nothing at all <laughs> incredible that is really incredible okay so that was uh, really uh, a good idea so yeah I uh, definitely um, put now grease on it and uh, then this will be good yeah so you really discover always things uh, you uh, don't uh, even think about so ah I mean this is uh, you know a well-known um, and uh, established brand and uh, uh, it uh, you know hopeless really hopeless okay so everything is back together and uh, now we can uh, start finishing our PA work and uh, yeah we will go back now to the main board and uh, yeah see what we can do 
Yeah, so this is now here my uh, test configuration. So uh, the advantage right now is that uh, I really have uh, access from, you know, both sides. So I'm uh, really able, I should not turn it too fast, but uh, as you uh, can see, I have now access to both uh, sides of uh, this PCB um, the, because it is a double-sided PCB and uh, yeah, for troubleshooting right now we uh, need to have access from uh, both sides. So uh, yeah, I needed uh, to do here uh, some little tricks so this PCB is uh, here on uh, this line so that it uh, can't uh, fall down and uh, yeah now I have uh, a nice access and uh, a second uh, issue is this uh, regulator here needs uh, to get an external heatsink because normally uh, the chassis is a heatsink but uh, yeah, chassis is now not available and uh, so therefore we need to mount an external heatsink that uh, this um, regulator will get uh, cooled a little bit. And you may believe it uh, or not, uh, I've done my tests and uh, yeah, so the whole problem uh, what looks like uh, a thermic uh, problem is gone with the new ribbon cable and uh, again it is uh, a problem of uh, this horrible ribbon cable so obviously uh, the uh, contacts was loose or so and uh, so intermittent uh, problems which uh, looked like a uh, thermic uh, problem but it wasn't again it was crappy ribbon cable so unbelievable okay so left uh, is to um to adjust uh, the board a little bit to align uh, the master frequency from uh, the DDS board and uh, then we're gonna change the uh, battery here um, on uh, the control board um, yeah our radio is now some years old and uh, the owner asked me to change the battery as well so that uh, will be done and uh, yeah what can I say now receive is stable great but unbelievable uh, crappy uh, you know ribbon cable I ah, hopeless okay so the rake is now in the adjustment mode and uh, you can read it here that uh, it is in uh, adjustment and uh, yeah so um, we want to now you know adjust the reference uh, oscillator and uh, the reference uh, frequency should be 124.032 megahertz and uh, yeah let me see what we have yeah that is uh, what we have and uh, that means that our our reference is uh, yeah approximately 570 uh, hertz off so we need to readjust uh, that yeah and uh, therefore yeah, we have uh, already uh, connected um, all the uh, equipment as required in the service manual and uh, now we can start adjusting to 124.032 megahertz. 
Okay, so let's uh, start uh, adjusting. And uh, yeah, you see, I am able to adjust the frequency. And uh, yeah, as I said, uh, 124. Point zero three two megahertz is the wanted value, and uh, ah, you see the last uh, digit is representing representing the one hertz area. So that means we are really close by and uh, yeah now we are three hertz off and uh, that is obviously the best we can uh, do because uh, this adjustment is digital so um, we are not uh, tuning as you might uh, think um, with a ceramic uh, screwdriver or so it is uh, really uh, set to this adjustment mode and uh, the adjustment itself uh, is handled wire the main frequency dial and uh, yeah when setting is ready I simply uh, press set which means the new frequency is now uh, stored in the memory here in the radio so that means um, that is all you need to do you do not need a screwdriver any longer so everything is digital right now okay so the alignment uh, procedure uh, has now worked out and uh, yeah our uh, adjustment of uh, the main reference frequency um, is also performed and uh, yeah we can uh, check it if the feedback tone is uh, exactly uh, one kilohertz and by that uh, test we can be then sure that uh, our frequency alignment is working in the right way so therefore you can have a look here so that here is the feedback uh, frequency from uh, the radio and uh, you see it is uh, 999 point yeah what is it uh, between 2 or 7 so you see the uh, offset now is is less than uh, one Hertz or the the Delta is uh, less one than one Hertz and that means um, that uh, the reference oscillator inside is uh, now tuned in a good way so that uh, now the frequency is uh, really set S meter alignment has been done as well so you can uh, see we have a nice S9 indication here and we are feeding in exactly minus 73 dBm so that is uh, done as well and uh, with the settings according according to the uh, service manual all uh, the bandpass filters has been set so yeah we have really performed a complete new setting uh, for this radio okay now we have uh, to do some more little uh, maintenance uh, work like uh, we have to change uh, the battery uh, as I already uh, said and uh, yeah okay so that uh, will be then next okay so this is here uh, the control board and uh, you see down here the little battery which uh, we need uh, to change and uh, yeah of course uh, I have here 
a new battery so um, original icon part so uh, we can uh, directly change this little battery here okay okay so let's uh, check the old uh, battery and uh, yeah you can see the old battery is definitely dead so um, there is <laughs> yeah nothing so completely uh, dead so that was really a good idea to uh, change it okay so the new battery is in place and uh, yeah we can now install it back to the radio additional to that what we had up to now uh, there is another problem we have to deal with and uh, that is that no remote signals are accepted by the radio so yeah you know we we have here a remote uh, input and we can operate the radio wire program like um, ham radio deluxe or so and uh, therefore you uh, connect your uh, radio to your computer and you're able to operate the radio via remote and uh, that is another problem this uh, radio has it uh, does not work on remote anymore and um, <clears throat> yeah when we go down uh, here <clears throat> so let me see if we get it uh, into focus uh, yeah when we go down there I hope you can already see it here we have a burnt coil so that is a ship coil which is the ground connection for the remote input and uh, this coil here is uh, burnt out so um, yeah, something happened to this input and uh, first of all we uh, need to replace of course this um, ship coil to um, have the first problem solved but then we do not really know if uh, this is the uh, only problem but anyways this is really obvious so the first we do is uh, changing it okay yeah here we have our new uh, ships so this is uh, yeah the ship coil at least and uh, that is uh, what we uh, have to replace yeah so uh, let's gonna do it i have not yet started uh, desoldering it but uh, unfortunately uh, it uh, has burned the trace so mm, that makes it uh, much more difficult to uh, replace it ah, okay so um, first of all let me try to get it out without uh, damaging the pet here on the left side uh, which will be difficult uh, enough but uh, yeah then uh, after that we need to see how we can replace uh, the new one because here on the right hand side our pet is gone so mm, uh, not very nice man that was not easy well, I replace a new uh, ship coil, but uh, as you can see down there, yeah, it uh, does not look very nice. Uh, uh, close by, we have here uh, the burnt uh, PCB, and uh, yeah, I've tried to bring it in somehow, but um, it does not look very nice. But anyways, uh, we uh, do have. Um, 
continuity. So uh, that is uh, what uh, I have tested so far. And uh, yeah, when we put one tip uh, up there and the other one, uh, it is this here. All right, so you uh, can hear that um, it is going here through our ship coil. So uh, we have the needed um, continuity, but uh, well, uh, it does, doesn't uh, look very nice. But anyways, it uh, seems to work, but uh, I really can't give uh, a guarantee that uh, it will last uh, forever because yeah you know all the leads down here the traces are really damaged and burned so okay i mean um we try it we uh, simply try it and uh, maybe it uh, will last um, and if not yeah we need to try another solution but anyways for the moment in time it looks good okay so the PCB is uh, back in and uh, the control board this is the control board or you know the computer if you like uh, to operate uh, the radio and uh, with the control board in place we should be uh, able to um, get a ground connection uh, via our remote jack ground. So I have uh, just put in here a jack and uh, my DMN is uh, switched to beeper and uh, when I now go here on the board okay and uh, just uh, connect it to ground then you see ah okay ground is uh, obviously now available so that uh, means that uh, first of all um, our little ship inductor we uh, put here in our uh, circuit is uh, really making uh, contact and uh, with the control board in place we have ground uh, available and that means that you know the little resistor which is here in the control board and uh, connecting this ground here from the remote input to ground is still okay so uh, the ship resistor seems to be the uh, only uh, component which uh, was burned and not the resistor which is here on the control board and well you can uh, see it uh, here so let me see if uh, I can make it uh, visible for you um, uh, okay let me try it uh, this way and uh, then okay so what we what we see here is the control board and uh, this here is uh, the uh, connector uh, to the control board and what you can find here is this resistor down here and here on the control board our ground from the signal line so it is here the uh, Charlie India Victor Echo line this here right is switched we are uh, this r1127 which is a zero ohm resistor here it is uh, connected to ground okay so that means exactly what uh, we uh, have uh, tested here on uh, our on our radio so if i go here to the remote input ground okay and uh, I will then try to do it here so it is definitely ground okay so that means 
um, that obviously this R1127 is okay and uh, not blown. And for all who may not believe uh, what uh, I said, so I have taken the control board uh, back out and uh, well I do the same test and uh, you have seen I have uh, also touched this ground here um, and uh, there we had our beep and you see now I'm uh, here again um, at the ground of our remote um, input and I connect it here to ground and uh, you do not hear the beep so that means um, when uh, we uh, put our control board uh, back so let me see if I can manage it here via the camera okay should be okay and I'm going back to this point that uh, you can see it and now you see it is back and that means that uh, the resistor here on our control board is uh, okay that's it so far um, yeah I hope that uh, there is nothing uh, else uh, blown because uh, when we when we uh, see it here on our schematic we can find here so this here the Charlie India Victor so this here is our line in our data line uh, in which is then um, via this uh, yeah um, inverting uh, amplifier it is uh, connected uh, somehow to uh, the uh, to the processor um, so I hope that uh, nothing else is blown here but uh, our data line itself uh, was wasn't was not uh, inf influenced uh, by this uh, short so it was only on the ground line so I hope that uh, here uh, we have no problem so the uh, only thing uh, we found uh, was uh, you know that uh, the ship coil was uh, blown in the ground line so therefore um, you know I hope that uh, there is nothing else really faulty but that is uh, something we are gonna check out later okay well unfortunately our remote control doesn't work and um, yeah, uh, as I already uh, said, uh, the remote control components are here on the control board um, and in particular this is uh, this area and uh, yeah, when we um, watch our... Uh, let me see if I can get it in for you. Um, so here we uh, have our uh, data uh, input and um, yeah this is a line uh, amplifier and um, this Bose uh, transistors here has um, to handle you know the uh, data uh, communication and uh, this uh, transistor here is uh, dead so we have uh, a short between base and uh, collector so well um, the only thing I can do is uh, I have uh, to take out uh, the transistor I mean for the moment in time I uh, can only check uh, this transistor down here um, in in the circuit and uh, we all know that uh, this is uh, not possible uh, but uh, anyway there are high resistors uh, what is it 12k and uh, 18k around so those uh, transistors should not really uh, influence you know 
the reading um, for this transistor. But to make uh, it sure, I uh, have to take this transistor out and uh, we have to um, check this transistor uh, finally, yeah, out of the circuit to be sure that uh, this transistor is dead, but um, ah, I'm nearly sure. Okay, and uh, here's our component. Uh, so let me see. Ah, that is too much. But yeah, so it might work. And uh, you may see I followed your advice. This is double sided um, tape. And now my little component can't jump anymore. <laughs> okay, so um, the multimeter is uh, set to beep, as you can hear, and yeah, uh, collector and uh, what is it, base, and you see this transistor is shorted out, and uh, therefore our data transfer is uh, not possible and uh, it is clear that uh, under these uh, circumstances um, we have no remote control. So again this transistor here is uh, toasted and uh, here is our incoming data line okay and uh, yeah <laughs> it is uh, clear when uh, this uh, one doesn't uh, work any longer um, then it is uh, clear you know that this remote control doesn't work so yeah we have to see if we can get a new transistor and um, then we can go ahead I mean basically uh, the radio uh, is working uh, fine so I could uh, easily put back, you know, the control board um, because it doesn't matter if uh, this uh, shorted uh, transistor is in or not. Um, it doesn't work either way. So um, I could put it back. The radio uh, is working and um, yeah, I have uh, to discuss it um, with the owner and um, yeah then uh, we can decide um, what we gonna do all right so let us uh, replace the defective uh, transistor so I have here some uh, new transistors and um, yeah let us uh, solder the new one in and then we will see how it works. Okay, so I've now replaced the new uh, transistor and uh, that means um, hopefully our board will work again and uh, yeah, I will now rebuild it and um, put it all back into the radio and then uh, we can uh, finally do our test if uh, we have a remote control working again. Yeah, as you can see our um, control unit is uh, back in the radio and uh, I have the radio connected to the generator so I'm gonna switch on the radio right now and as we uh, can hear, uh, we have a tone, so uh, there is a receive, so you can uh, read it down there, so no problem. Um, I have already uh, connected, yeah, let me turn down the tone, so I've already connected here our remote control cable uh, going to the computer and uh, yeah here on the computer uh, let me go a little higher uh, I have um, ham radio deluxe uh, running and uh, yeah old settings uh, are done here in the menu so uh, it is a ICOM IC7000 and I have uh, 
shoes in here are comport so everything should be okay and uh, now when I try to connect we should get a connect so let's see what happens hey yes here we are so the radio is connected so you see radio is already displaying um, yeah the frequency with which is uh, also down uh, here in uh, the display 14100 and I'm uh, obviously able to control now the rig here via the computer so yeah you can hear it you can hear the tone moving and uh, that is a clear sign that uh, yeah let me let me show you uh, so now I go to the computer uh, I don't touch I don't touch here the dial so I do it a little bit down here so I can do it here you see wire the computer so that means that means finally um, remote control is working again so great uh, everything uh, has been done um, the radio is now fully working and uh, yeah it can uh, finally go back to the owner all right so to summarize that uh, was really an interesting fault because um, at the beginning we thought it is a, a thermal a thermal uh, a problem so um, that uh, a component uh, is uh, reacting on uh, the change in uh, temperature but uh, it really turned out that uh, it was again the ribbon cable and ah okay if uh, you know um, the cable is uh, losing the connection to the um, uh, to the connector and uh, the cable itself I mean yeah this can be uh, changed uh, when we put some uh, uh, freezer spray onto it because then you know uh, it's uh, turning uh, together and uh, then you might get a contact um, so yeah everything looks like that uh, uh, it was something like that but uh, it wasn't it only was you know ribbon cable again unbelievable and then okay our uh, control board uh, problem that uh, we uh, had no um, uh, remote control working to fold our little uh, coil which was completely burned out and then the broken uh, transistor um, yeah, so a lot of uh, little problems to solve, but uh, yeah, okay, that's it, we are ready, and uh, if uh, this uh, video was uh, of any value for you, yeah, please give me a big thumb up for this video, and catch you next time, bye!